So my name is Rigitza Lewis and I'm a clinical specialist physiotherapist. I work at the Royal United Hospitals uh, NHS Foundation Trust in Bath. And I'd like to tell you about the progress program that we devised uh, for people recovering from venous thromboembolism. So the issue we had found here, which I think is more of a national issue potentially, is that um, if you have a blood, blood clot in your heart, you get cardiac rehab. If it's in your uh, brain, you might get stroke rehab. If you have a long-standing um, lung condition, you'd have access to pulmonary rehab, hopefully. But if you have a VTE, you might not be eligible for any kind of rehab at all. And we have found that an issue here with patients um, being seen perhaps three months after their VT and having some quite significant side effects and a lot of anxiety afterwards and struggling to get back into physical activity, perhaps even struggling to get back into work. So uh, we got together as a multidisciplinary team and we had a consultant hematologist uh, Dr. Mark Robinson. We uh, were two specialist physiotherapists, so myself and my colleague Chrissy Entwistle, and a specialist pharmacist Nathan Hutchinson Jones. Um, and we uh, devised a program to try out on our patients uh, under the heading of service improvement. So we called our program uh, Progress. And the initial assessment um, consisted of baseline measurements. Um, we would give lifestyle advice as well. So if people didn't feel that this program was something for them, then they could go away with some advice and hopefully uh, get back into activity regardless. Um, and we talked to our patients about safety as in how do I interpret the symptoms I'm feeling what is um, what do I really need to take action on and what is just part of recovery and how might we fit in the physical activity into the individual person's life. So the program we uh, devised was a 10 week program and uh, we had capacity to have up to 16 participants at a time. Um, we would start with a joint a warm up, which was generally in sitting, so, so quite a gentle start. And we then had a circuit with 10 exercises of two minutes each and a joint cool down. Now, the 10 exercises of two minutes each, a circuit uh, of exercise, doesn't sound very strenuous, um, but I can guarantee you that it was. Uh, and everybody got to work at their own level. Um, to uh, up to an intensity of what we call moderate. So uh, we then uh, looked at outcomes. We were interested in um, daily physical activity, quality of life, both related to the, um, the embolism and more generally. Um, we looked at uh, cardiovascular exercise tolerance and general strength, confidence to exercise, and fatigue. And during our six-month program, um, we had a total number of referrals of, of 40. And out of the 40, 27 uh, accepted the invitation to come and be assessed. Um, not all of the 27 felt they needed to take part in the program. So some of them just, so six of those would uh, just had the advice during the assessment session and then went off and did their own thing. And 21 patients started our program. Out of those 10 patients completed the program, um, and we have some thoughts as to, to why that may be that we, we lost some of them. Um, I'll come on to that later. Um, and, and we got completed outcome measures from, from 10, 10 patients. So the data 
but that we collected shows, first of all, there were no adverse events, which is really, really uh, important, really good. And um, we found, which was an amazing outcome, that when we tested people in the incremental shuttle walking test, uh, all participants exceeded the minimal clinically important difference of 47 and a half meters. So excellent. Um, I mentioned fatigue, confidence uh, to exercise. They've both improved. We've got an improvement in the pulmonary embolism specific quality of life. Um, we've got improved grip strength, which is a good indicator of overall strength. And in the health-related quality of life, um, we've got an increase in the overall health on the visual analog scale. Um, but on top of that, we've got for nine out of the 10 patients, we have improvements in mobility, self-care, usual activities, pain, discomfort, and anxiety, depression. So that is, is meaningful as well. In the GP physical activity questionnaire, um, before the program, eight patients were classed as inactive. And after the program, only three were classed as inactive. Um, one of the really interesting things he, here would be um, the learning points that we've had. And um, first of all, I've, I've shaded some of these uh, in a, a slightly lighter color, and that is uh, anxiety, interpretation of symptoms, and expectation man management. Now, these are things that we can all help um, and, and talk to our patients about, our VTE patients, because anxiety is an enormous component. We were surprised about that when we started the program. And, and most of our patients really need support in interpreting their symptoms. What am I feeling now? Is this okay? Is this not okay? And that's all related to the trauma of the initial event. Um, and also some expectation management around the fact that you might still have symptoms, or although you've started on anticoagulation, the symptoms might just last a bit longer and, and to um, prepare patients for that is really, really useful. So we also found that, uh, well, no surprise, but our um, patient group was very varied. So we'd have quite young people and we'd have quite elderly people as well. Um, and if you're running a group like this, a lot of flexibility is required to accommodate um, comorbidities, essentially. So we were forever tweaking also our intervention so that everybody got out of it what they needed. And for instance, for somebody who's elderly and frail, it might be to incorporate some balance and, and false prevention work. Um, in terms of risk management, we really took an MDT approach. So had a weekly meetings um, with, so that was therapies and uh, the hematology uh, uh, professionals so that we could discuss anything that had come up in any of the sessions and deal with it straight away. Um, and that could be that we had found a patient who would started getting some um, some chest pain, so we could get them referred for a, for a scan straight away uh, and, and work out what was going on. Um, we certainly found that we need to intervene as early as possible. Some of the patients we got were three months down the line because that's when they were being reviewed. Uh, but really, it would have been much, much better if they had had some of this information at diagnosis or even had the offer of taking part at diagnosis as soon as they were on um, anticoagulants. The length of the program we did was 10 weeks. And in retrospect, that was a bit too long. And that probably accounts for some of the drop off so that when patients felt they were, be, they were, they were a bit better, they might have stopped coming because they had other uh, competing priorities. So if we uh, if we're looking at it again, we'd probably say six weeks, potentially eight, 
but the standard length of a cardiac or pulmonary rehab program. And then there's a question of an educational component. Now that wasn't in our program, that wasn't in our funding, but um, that would certainly be something to consider. We did do a lot of education of our patients during the program, um, during the exercise sessions, and they had a lot of benefit from talking to each other as well. Uh, in that could be after the session, during the sessions, but also meeting up for for tea or or, um, or having a chat after the sessions. So. This is the poster that we presented at the International Society of Thrombosis and Hemostasis earlier this year. Um, and if you have a look at the key findings, we would like to highlight that this, based on our experience, which, which is a small patient sample, um, we found that we had no adverse events and we had uh, a lot of improvements in our patients. So we really recommend to others to uh, go down this route. Uh, we clearly need to do uh, more research in this vein, um, but all of our experience has been very, very positive. And I'd like to finish this talk with um, giving our patients the last word and have a look at the quotes from them and how it really has changed lives, getting active, moving more and having some support. Thank you.